You already have the problem that there'll be the jerk in your office who thinks it's glamorous. Hey everyone, John here from the Cast and Spirit podcast. We have back on the show Steve Wozniak, the number four world record holder, according to IFGA. And he's going to dive into how he's able to travel and fish so much with a nine to five job. You probably have one as well. And, you know, a lot of times we use it as a crutch to not fish. We're just too busy. But Steve shows you some practical tips and tricks to use your business travel to fish some of the most exotic locations. Please welcome back Steve Wozniak. So I think my boss would be equally bewildered. Um, This is one of these things that um, probably the first piece of advice I would give to anybody on this is be very low key. Okay. People who travel a lot for business and I travel a ton for business. um, You already have the problem that there'll be the jerk in your office who thinks it's glamorous you know, to fly through Newark at two in the morning. Um, Every time I turn an expense report, oh, it must be nice. It's like, you have no idea. The airport in Paris looks just like the airport in Newark. Okay, but I would say, first thing, be low key. Because as soon as anybody figures out you're having any fun um, on this stuff, somebody who has no idea you're doing a great job at your stuff and, you know, your weekend is your weekend, will still make trouble for you. So just a little word to the wise there. Now, um, you know, I'm a senior executive. I travel globally. So if I'm in Singapore, you know, and I have meetings, you know, I get there Tuesday, I got meetings Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and then I want to, and then I can go home. Okay. Which would then be Saturday morning because the, the flights from Singapore go out in the morning. Um, you know, if, if I want to stay there on my own dime, it doesn't cost my company another penny. To, to have me, you know, stay over, you know, and go fishing three, four days in Singapore. Um, as a matter of fact, it can actually save money because um, if I flew in on a Tuesday and out on a Saturday morning, that ticket's going to be a whole lot more than if I flew in on a Tuesday and flew out on a Sunday. It's when you stay over a Saturday night, the tickets get cheaper, which your company will appreciate. Um, so, you know, that time's my own. I take a day or two of vacation. And so, a place like Singapore is a great springboard because say, I want to take that same couple of days of vacation. Nothing stops me from going to the Maldives. Nothing stops me from going to Thailand, uh, Brunei. Okay. Places along those lines. So I've springboarded a lot of business travel. And then the other thing business travel does is gives you miles. And so, you know, I have a hundred zillion frequent flyer miles, so I can use those to, uh, uh, to fly places. But I say, you know, You've got to figure out kind of what the environment is, you know, what your, your company, you know, is okay with and not okay with. And, and, you know, some places, I mean, once you're on, you know, you're off the company dime, as long as you're not costing them anything extra, most places are pretty cool about letting you quietly stick it out. Um, the other thing is, I mean, at the level I've done it, it's, 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 it's an obsession. And so you're sacrificing time and other stuff to do things like that. So, you know, that is your vacation. My wife gets this some of the time, doesn't get this some of the time. But like, you know, if we're going to Egypt, okay, which, you know, she, that, that was an awesome trip. But, you know, I am going to shove some fishing into going to Egypt, um, which the Red Sea is actually really awesome and full of species. Um, but like the Nile River is too. Uh, Aswan Dam was a little disappointing. I think they've killed most of those big Nile perch, but you know, that's the, the long and the short of it is, you know, you've got to judge where you are, you know, in, in terms of your boss and your, and, and the culture of your company and, you know, see what you can squeeze in and, you know, being a great performer, you know, being somebody that's recognized as doing a good job at stuff and that they want you doing this stuff can usually smooth that pathway a bit. Um, but, you know, and, and sometimes it's just, you know, if you're, you know, uh, uh, working by the hour, which we all have, um, and, and, you know, your day's over, you can sometimes juggle that where maybe you, you, you know, go a couple, you know, instead of working, you know, eight to five, you work 10 to seven because you've got a great tide in the morning for something. Um, and it's just always being cognizant of that. So I don't know if that's much advice, but that's, that's how I've managed so far. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the podcast. I hope you're now able to utilize your business travel and vacations more effectively when it comes to fishing. 
And if you have any other tips that weren't mentioned by Steve, let me know. Go to castlespear.com forward slash contact, and I'll definitely share it with the rest of you guys. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the podcast so you never miss a future episode. And share this with three of your fishing buddies. Yep, just word of mouth is great. Just tell them, hey, listen to this podcast. That would help us grow this thing to be the best fishing podcast on the web. And if you want to sign up for our newsletter, just go to castlespear.com and enter your email in the pop-up. This will make sure that you get all the latest articles, videos, and anything else we make straight to your inbox once a week. All right, with that, keep those lines tight, everyone. See ya.